we are an unserious nation. And, and so most of today's episode is deeply unserious because with how intense the news can be, it is nice to take a step back and look at at least the more absurd and outrageous aspects of it. And yeah, unfortunately, some of the dumbest things that have happened in recent years have contributed to the chaos. But when you read things like M&M's self-canceling their spokes candies because of all the faux outrage surrounding their fashion choices and half-hearted attempts at inc inclusivity, it's just, you have to wonder, what the hell's going on? Well, it's not just that. We've also got an update on... Uh... George Santos, the very, very talented, the wickedly talented George Santos, yeah. and Trump doing a very solid uh, couple minutes uh, of stand-up comedy at a funeral. Yeah. And somehow much more than that. But mm. let's get back to the dumbest news story of them all. M&Ms canceling themselves. Over what you might be asking, why would they be canceling themselves? What? Was it the child slavery uh, could have been that, that right? their parent company engages in around mm. the world? That's, no, oh. no, of course not. We're going to ignore that. Mm -hmm. They're canceling their spokes candies because they become just too politicized for swapping out certain clothing items, shoes and whatnot, as yeah. well as launching a uh, brief pro-women campaign where a certain amount of sales would go to charities that support women and girls in creative fields. I mean, when you put it like that, it um, doesn't seem like something worth really anyone's attention, but you'd be wrong. Yeah, here, here we are. Uh, that campaign, it did end, and they said, uh, you know, enough of that woke shit. We're no done. More. We are <laughs> taking that money back from all the women we donated to. <laughs> yeah, uh, the M&Ms, they're just candy-coated chocolates now, all because Tucker Carlson couldn't tell the difference between eye candy and real candy. Have you tried eating M&M's without a rock hard boner? It doesn't taste the same. Yeah, I do want to be clear. I don't think that M&M's took the money back from those charities. I believe it, the campaign ended successfully uh, yeah, was, and they donated the money. I'm just doing a goof here. Yeah. Sorry, Mars candy. <laughs> uh, anyways, the plan now is to have one solitary voice behind the brand. A person who no one could possibly see a problem with. Something wholesome that everyone loves. The Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, viewer, would you be shocked to hear that the ultra right wing M&M fanatics out there did, in fact, have a problem with the newly announced spokesperson who is not the Stay Puff Marshmallow Spokes Man? Spokeswoman. Yeah. Here's your problem. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll get to that in a second, but let's focus on the very real official statement from M&Ms regarding their mascots. And Elliot, I'm sorry, but this is your burden. You must read the press release from this very serious candy company. All right, put them on my brand voice. <clears throat> America, let's talk. In the last year, we've made some changes to our beloved spokes candies. We weren't sure if anyone would even notice, and we definitely didn't think it would break the internet. But now we get it. Even a candy's shoes can be polarizing, which was the last thing M&M's wanted, since we're all about bringing people together. Therefore, we have decided to take an indefinite pause from the spokes candies. In their place, we are proud to introduce a spokesperson America can agree on, the beloved Maya Rudolph. We are confident Ms. Rudolph will champion the power of fun to create a world where everyone feels they belong. Yeah, we're a dead serious country over mm -hmm. here. Yeah. This but... is, uh, our whims are what the, you know, most powerful, greatest country in the world. And uh, yeah. We're dealing with some stuff over yeah. here. We got we got some candy drama happening here, and y'all have to hear about it. Yeah, uh, but like we said, the reaction to uh, the you know spokesperson everyone can agree on was shockingly not unanimous. Oh, praise. come on, she's Maya Rudolph. I know, but what's many, not to like? Many of the top responses on the Instagram post that Eminem's made shortly after it went live. Uh, they just were, were constant comments repeating the same claim that uh, Maya Rudolph hates America. Mm, I'm going to need some evidence for that. Yeah, I mean, holy shit. If Maya Rudolph is too extreme for people, then I, I don't know what to tell you. But one thing we are sure of, though, the Tucker Carlson's of the world, they're going to lose their, their goddamn minds if this means that the M&M's meeting Santa, he does exist commercial, does not air this year. You know who else is going to lose their minds? The voice actors who have been getting a steady annual paycheck mm -hmm. from that for uh, 20 years now. Yeah. Come on. Well, now they can't complain I'm really because Rudolph is right in her name. Yeah. You can't wage a war on Christmas oh, with Maya this. Oh, Maya Yeah. But I'm so curious. What? I'm sure it's just like she voted for Joe Biden or something like that. 
or said that like uh, police should stop killing black people and that's why she hates America. But yeah, I don't know. She's uh, she's funny and she's uh, more importantly, um, she's Paul Thomas Anderson's wife and muse. So um, yeah, protect her at all costs. This feels like Eminem like asked Chat GPT who the least offensive Hollywood celebrity could be. Yeah, I guess. But like just the fact that she's a black woman yeah. would uh, just that's always going to be controversial no matter what. Yeah. So um, I don't know. This is weird. Why are we why does anyone care about this? We would no one would be talking about any of this shit if Tucker Carlson Carlson wasn't talking about it regularly yeah, on America's most watched news broadcast. That's the crazy thing is like, yeah, it's like it's dumb that we make fun of this because it's it is pointless. But the fact remains this is being spewed to the largest TV viewing audience in the country it's, during prime time as if it is an actual fucking war against uh, like nostalgia or or the the norms, my precious Eminem norms. Yeah. Well, uh, they were also to be fair, they were also offended about the male Eminem with anxiety. Men don't get anxiety. Men just kill themselves when they start feeling bad about themselves in this country. And others. In this country, when a man isn't feeling up to it, well, he takes care of it permanently. And uh, and that's not toxic. That's just how we do things here. And that's and why nothing my, we can change That's why it. my life expectancy is 10 years shorter than my wife's. Mm-hmm. But this is a great opportunity for the return, the long-awaited return. Now that there's a power vacuum of talking, edible... Uh, creatures, mm -hmm. the Eminem uh, celebrity candies are out. It's time, folks. Long overdue. We're bringing it back. Come on out, California raisins. Play, yeah. some, play some of that jazz. Hell yeah. Yeah, they said it was racist, but yeah, it kind of is. But we're bringing them back. Yeah. And, Look at them. And the Facebook and Instagram comments are going to be exactly the same. Hell yeah. I missed those raisins until... Big Raisin got too woke. California Raisin Growers Association gave in to the woke mob. That's right. Well, you know, it would be a joy to see them back on the TV screen, wouldn't it? Wouldn't and it, it would folks? put a lot of claymation animators back in business. That's right. There you go. Don't dare turn those into CGI monstrosities. No. No. But uh, you know who actually voiced one of the M&Ms back in the early 2000s? George Santos. Yeah, little known fact. Yeah. Definitely true. But George Santos probably has a few more things on his plate than a bunch of bland, sexless candies. Mm -mm. Uh, he's in the midst of a never-ending scandal involving his past. A past that has so far been proven completely fabricated in nearly every way. Though we did finally get confirmation on one aspect of it. Only, you know, after Santos spent days outright denying it. Yeah, George Santos dressed up in drag. He admitted. He admitted. <laughs> He admitted. But he is downplaying the whole thing, which is ridiculous for many reasons. The most important being, it should be fine for people to enjoy themselves. And if you want to dress up in women's clothing, that's fine. I mean, this is this is historic. You take away the controversy of this man being a habitual liar. He, it is historic that he yeah. is the first confirmed proud drag queen to uh, serve in the U.S. federal government. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've had a lot of secret drag queens. The former head of the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover, he he liked to. Like to put on some stockings once in a while, but yeah. he, he kept that a secret. But we got George Santos here, who was in the fucking newspaper down in Brazil doing, doing interviews, doing TV interviews. <laughs> yeah. Like, this could have been a, this is a, a big moment mm -hmm. for the LGBT community, but uh, yeah, but it's overshadowed by all this controversy. It's, it's too bad. And, yeah, also the problem is that his party has made this specific practice one of their extreme hot button issues. And it's one that's uh, actually getting violent and led to uh, nationwide campaigns of harassment. See, this so is, that's the, the the big issue. Let me put my conservative brain on for a second. Did he read stories to children while wearing that dress? Well, we don't know yet, but I would I would assume no. Uh, well, then 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 he's one of the good ones. Well, technically, Elliot, if he did do a TV interview in in drag, and we know how much he lies. And if a child was watching TV at the time, that child he technically was, was reading stories groomed to children. Being groomed through the antennas. My goodness. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Mr. Santos, of course, downplayed the whole thing, alluding to the fact that he was just young and having fun, which again, should be fine, but has it made people the target of potential hate crimes. He's, his answer is so funny. He's like, he's like, I wasn't a drag queen. It was a festival and I was having a good time. It's like, you, you literally were a drag queen. You had a drag queen name. You appeared at multiple events. You were on camera saying all the different gay clubs in Rio de Janeiro that you specifically have performed 
yeah. dragon. And he's like, well, it's not the same. Like a drag queen is does this, but what I did is I went to a gay parade uh, dressed in drag. So that's completely different. It's just that's just a goof, just for good times. Yeah, not the same thing. Anyways, we're <laughs> we're, we're not trying to you know fight with Mr. Santos's lack of irony or, or anything like that. There is no point. But here's the update from Insider. Recently surfaced images show Santos dressed in a red feathered dress and wig, jewelry, and makeup. Yula Richard, a drag performer from Brazil, said that she had known Santos as a drag queen and that he'd competed in drag in a beauty pageant under the name Katara Ravash in 2008. Quote, I was not a drag queen. I was young and I had fun at a festival, <laughs> Santos told reporters while arriving at an airport in New York City on Saturday, TMZ reported. I was not a, uh, I was not a drug user. I just went to a lot of festivals and I had a good time. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Sorry, bro. Not good enough. You're getting canceled, Mr. Yeah. Santos. Canceled by your own kind because Fox News immediately brought out the receipts to their extremely level-headed audience where they reported that Santos actually partied in drag for years despite claiming he dressed up for fun at Brazil party. Oh, so it's fine if you do it just, you know, once or twice. Yeah. But, uh, I don't despite know. him saying he did it for fun, it was clearly a pattern. He lied to us, Fox News, and our viewers by saying he just did it for fun, like Steven Crowder does. He thinks you, the humble Fox News viewer, is stupid. <laughs> Are we going to let him do that? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, anyway, here's more from Fox News proving that the, the tide is shifting on Mr. Santos because uh, these videos aren't great quality. They wouldn't have even made headlines if not for the verifiable photo released last week. Yeah. Still, if true, it's classic Santos. On one hand, claiming that he wasn't a drag queen, while on the other laying out the multiple times and locations that he's performed in drag to a local reporter during a pride parade in Brazil. And we, we showed this, uh, I think this clip to, uh, like, without sound last time, but here you go. Yeah. A translation of the video provided by the New York Post, which it said was filmed at a pride parade in Niteroi in 2005, described the person alleged to be Santos listing the locations where he performed drag. Oh, this, yeah, this is the one. I quote, I do presentations at 1940 in Jacarapagua. I do Casca Dura. I also did Cabaret Casanova in Gloria, and I did one at Le Boy, the person says before going on to praise the organizers of the event. Le Boy is such a good gay club name. Mm -hmm. Le Boy. Yeah. Going down to Le Boy to see some boys. Anyway, these are just two conservative outlets who are pouncing all over this. It'll be your own party that really finally puts the, the nail in the coffin. Yes, this you. is the least scandalous thing that he's done. Although, and it's the one that they're pouncing on him for. Although, even if the conservative media has turned on him, Kevin McCarthy, he... Santos must have, like, some blackmail on Kevin McCarthy. He just likes to fix broken people. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, to add insult to injury, Santos was also mocked relentlessly on Saturday Night Live <laughs> over the weekend. And uh, I'll take a look at what happened in the White House press room when someone brought up the name George Santos. Is George Santos invited? Uh, again, I... I, <laughs> I love how everybody laughed at that. Um, so, yeah. I mean, maybe one of the goals was getting parodied on SNL, which is a pretty big moment. I mean, this man, clearly, uh, his, his true goal, other than, like, politics came much later, his true goal was to be a star. Mm -hmm. From the beginning. And now he's a star. by being a featured... Uh, parody character on SNL, he's kind of achieved that. He, he, he's go literally gone from not, like a no-name, nobody knew who this yeah. person was a couple months ago, to one of the most famous people in the country yeah. for the dumbest reasons possible. In what other scenario would you know who the congressman for the third congressional district of New York was? Like, But this is that's what's crazier about... I mean, I guess it's because they had no, I guess, direct involvement or were voted into the government. But like a lot of the stories that we cover are like slow burns where like it's just over time, the things, you know, stack up and they're like, there's a, this is a disturbing pattern of uh, habitual bad behavior. Yeah. And it's like, Santos has been doing this for two decades. So, and lying about it and then getting voted into office based on all of those lies. So then it all came dumb, tumbling down so quickly that it is one of the most rapid rises to infamy that I've seen. That's been, been great for content. Sure has. But anyway, let's check in now on one of the bigger stories from last year. The severe lack of accessible and affordable Taylor Swift tickets in this country. Yeah. Not that we care about seeing Taylor Swift live. I'm sure, I'm I'm sure, sure it's lovely. But, uh, you know, if this is what it takes for people to finally stand up to these ticketing and venue behemoths, 
then so be it. Let them fight. Bands and artists have been trying to ring the alarm bells over Ticketmaster for decades now, and things have only gotten worse with Ticketmaster and Live Nation not only charging outrageous fees that sometimes dwarf the cost of the ticket itself, but by also running dynamic pricing models Sounds fun. Th that no it's not <laughs> they make the prices skyrocket immediately when tickets go on sale and then they run their own resale service on the side and take a cut of that in the form of more fees passed on to the buyer it's literally insane how much one single concert ticket can generate for the company especially if it's traded hands a few times yeah what like you know think of a, even a smaller venue like a mid-sized venue like 500 to a thousand people yeah. uh and then you know, how many times those tickets are changing hands and getting processing fees. It's nuts how much one ticket can make. And then you... It's especially outrageous if you ever go to another country and maybe one of the bands you like happens to be playing while you're there mm -hmm. and you buy tickets and they're like half what that same ticket would have yeah. cost. And, and back none of the, the uh, weird scalping <laughs> issues yeah. or, you know, it happens, but not on the scale yeah. of uh, what happens here. It's honestly... It's depressing. It's, yeah. it's nuts. So, yeah, uh, this has been devolving for years, and the collective anger, it does bubble up from time to time, but nothing could prepare the executives over at Ticketmaster and Live Nation for the Swifties. And now they're going to Washington, D.C. to attend a Senate hearing regarding their shady bi business practices, and it looks like the company's president is prepared to place the blame entirely on scalpers, an issue that they should be able to easily solve with the fees that they're charging. It simply cannot be that hard to verify the purchaser of the ticket and keep that ticket tied to their account or their name. Then, I don't know, identify people who habitually buy insane amounts of tickets and sell them. It's 2023. They can do it. But they make so much more off of the fees by letting the tickets change hands so many times that there's literally no monetary reason to stop. They it. make more money by not doing anything. Yes, this is the <laughs> goal. Anyways, here's Billboard with an update on the Senate hearing. While the Live Nation-owned Ticketmaster was villainized for weeks following the pre-sale for Swift's upcoming The Eras Tour that both broke single-day sales records and threw fans into a fury over service issues, according to a prepared opening statement reviewed by Billboard, Burke told plans to lay much of the blame on scalpers who used illegal bots to attack the online sale. The statement, to be delivered Tuesday, January 24th, in Washington, D.C., to the committee led by ranking member Dick Durbin, details Ticketmaster's ongoing arms race against scalpers who are illegally using autonomous software to disrupt and attack high-profile ticket sales. Country music legend Garth Brooks is lending his support to Berktold's testimony as well, with a letter defending Ticketmaster and attacking ticket scalpers who use illegal methods to buy up tickets. Garth! What are you doing, Garth? Come on, Garth. Yeah, you have no idea what it's like to buy t concert tickets. And it's extremely easy to believe that this is all the fault of scalpers, especially when the company's telling you that's why. But the system Ticketmaster has built literally incentivizes all of this activity every step of the way. They're making money off of this because they know they can. Anyways, the reporting continues. We knew bots would attack Swift's on sale and planned accordingly, reads Berkdahl's planned statement. We were then hit with three times the amount of bot traffic that we had ever experienced. And for the first time in 400 verified fan on sales, they came after our verified fan access code servers. While the bots failed to penetrate our systems or acquire any tickets, the attack required us to slow down or even pause our sales. This is what led to a terrible consumer experience that we deeply regret. I feel like... I know this word gets thrown around too much these days, but I feel like I'm being gaslit right now by the CEO or the president of uh, Ticketmaster who's turning this problem in, and also saying, uh, luckily, the bots didn't get through. And not just attributing the massive spike in traffic to the biggest artist yeah. and tour of the year. Um, and then claiming that, like, don't worry, though, none of those tickets went to scalpers, but their own system has dynamic pricing, which the traffic drives the price up to like $1,200 a ticket. And then they have verified resale, which is just the tickets changing hand nonstop. It's it's a system that they like. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm very disappointed in Garth Brooks. Yeah. I, I really miss that uh, that other uh, country singer with the cool black hair that was uh, emerged in the 90s. Uh, uh, was it? Seth Gaines or uh, Chris Gaines? Chris Gaines. Yeah, that, that guy's cool. This hot new pop star. He's uh, just comes out of nowhere with yeah. his soul patch and his. He would his never put hair. up with this. Yeah, yeah. Garth Brooks is interesting too, because like he knows this is a problem. That's why when he plays, he'll go and like play a major city, 
and just keep booking more shows as soon as the previous one sells out. Yeah. So he'll play like 10 dates in one city before moving on to the next place to make sure that everyone can like get a ticket. So he knows this is a problem. Yeah. It's weird that he's just like, no, but none of that is ticket Now nah, he's well. incentivized because it was like in this article talks about how he convinced like the owners of some stadium in Texas to let Ticketmaster be the exclusive ticket taker of it. So Damn. like I said, we got to get Chris Gaines on the on the yeah. case. And Bring then back we can... Chris Gaines. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, while Berktold notes that Ticketmaster accepts its responsibility to be the first line of defense against bots in this ever-escalating arms race, he intends to shift the hearing's focus to policy changes that could tamp down on scalpers. Quote, in this forum where we are here to discuss public policy, we also need to recognize how industrial scalpers breaking the law using bots and cyber attacks to try to unfairly gain tickets contributes to an awful consumer experience. His statement reads, we are doing everything we can to fight the people who attack our on sales and steal tickets meant for real fans. But we need help passing real reforms to stop this arms race. Anyways, yeah, yeah. We're, we're all looking for the guy responsible for <laughs> this uh, arms race. <laughs> but uh, it's, yeah. it's it's like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to say. Like on one hand, they're being like, yeah, regulate us. What are you going to do? Yeah. Force us to stop the bots because otherwise we have absolutely no legal reason to do so. And we have a pretty negative financial reason to do so. Because yeah. if the bots get through, which they definitely have and are, and not all of them are bots. A lot of them are just people who are going in and buying yeah. these tickets. They're like actual the, the, human scalpers. This is like the Elon uh, like version of... Yeah, you're blaming like, bots. Bots. Oh, it's all these bots. Wow, the bots are really out in full force tonight. Damn, they, all these bots. Because they can't defend themselves until now. Chat GPT has given them a voice. But uh, yeah, again, people... Unfortunately, if you enjoy live entertainment, in these United States, and also Canada and Mexico, I believe, they're pretty firmly established there, you're going to cross paths with Ticketmaster at some point or another. And while you should definitely check and see what options you have locally for smaller shows, it's almost an inevitability that you will face Final Boss, Ticketmaster, at some point. At the very least, you should avoid supporting their pre-sales and just wait till the secondary market cools down as the show or concert nears, and someone's going to get desperate. Yes. They're going to be like, shit, I need to make my money back. I, I'm batting a thousand with uh, after the pre-sale stuff. Uh, yeah, you're not always gonna get lucky. You're gonna miss out, but yeah, I've it's... yet to not get lucky on on shows that were claimed to have been sold yeah. out within like an hour. Seems to be the way. You wait till the day of, and um, there's gonna be some some people who never intended on going to the show ever no. by themselves. Maybe got a little too greedy in the after uh, the the you know the secondary market and yeah. didn't know didn't get any tickers, and now they're like shit. I'm going to be out like 50 to to $100 if I don't get someone to buy this. So uh, best offer, please. Yeah. And also, the bigger the venue, the more likely that there's going to be just every seat opening up as the yeah. day gets closer. So closer. And so. this is especially true for bands that are smart enough to um, add more shows when their shit sells out, which is get, becoming more and more uh, common. Well, yeah. In the big cities, it's great. It's also like the one thing that does suck about not being able to um, get a fair price at the uh, launch of the ticket sale is that like, if a bunch of people do protest by not just jumping at the pre-sale, like then are, the ticket masters be like, well, this band's not selling. Obviously no one wants to see yeah. them. So we should shave off some of these dates or something. And it's like, they've created like an artificial entire marketplace here. Yeah. Where we don't know what ticket sales are real or anticipatory for like profit. Yeah, and again, another big reason this sucks uh, is they own the venues. The venues themselves. Yeah, it's like they've got a vertical integration, which is yes. not monopolizing. It's not horizontal, it's vertical. <laughs> yeah, totally um, different. But yeah, anyway, that story was almost too serious. We'll have to get back to the dumb stuff in just a second. But first, let's thank today's sponsor, Factor. This new year, you've got goals, and Factor is here to help you achieve each and every one of them. Save time and have the energy you need to tackle everything on your to-do list with Factor's ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. Get Factor and not only skip the trip to the grocery store, but skip the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up too. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is heat and enjoy. No matter what your lifestyle, Factor has the meals to help you live it to the fullest with keto, calorie smart, vegan, veggie, and protein plus meals on the menu every week. Prepared by chefs and approved by dietitians, each meal has all the ingredients that you need to feel satisfied all day long. With 34 chef-prepared, dietitian-approved weekly options, there's always something new to try. 
Plus, you can round out your meal and replenish your snack supply with an assortment of 36 plus quick bites, smoothies, juices, and more satisfying add-ons. Looking to cut back on takeout? Get Factor instead. Not only is Factor cheaper than takeout, but meals are ready quicker than restaurant delivery, if you could believe it. Two minutes. Yeah, beat that restaurant. No restaurants are going to be able to beat that. Uh, get Factor and enjoy clean eating without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered right to your door. Ready in just two minutes, there really is no easier way to eat well. Achieve and maintain your goals this year with Factor. Get America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit and start saving time, eating well, and living your best year ever. Head to factor75.com slash newsday60 and use code newsday60 to get 60% off your first box. That is code newsday60 at factor75.com slash newsday60 to get 60% off your first box. All right, back to the news now with a story about a, a crooked cop with the most crooked cop name possible. If we are living in a simulation, the writers are continuing their streak of laziness because this is just ridiculous. A high-ranking FBI agent was charged with aiding a Russian oligarch, and that agent's name is Charles McGonagall. Charles McGonagall. Now, we've referenced this term before, but this is seriously some nominative determinism where your name dictates your destiny because this name is such a cop name that it's the name of a movie cop in a 25-year-old <laughs> Simpsons episode. Yeah. Anyways, now that we know a real-life Officer McGonagall exists and is crooked, let's check out this story. Here's the New York Times. A former senior FBI official in New York who oversaw some of the agency's most secret and sensitive counterintelligence investigations was accused on Monday of taking money from a former Albanian intelligence employee and from a representative of Oleg V. Deripaska, a Russian oligarch. The charges against the former official, Charles F. McGonagall, came in separate indictments unsealed in New York and Washington, D.C. after an investigation by his own agency and federal prosecutors. In the New York case, he was charged with violating economic sanctions that the United States has imposed on Russia because of its aggression in Ukraine. Federal prosecutors said Mr. McGonagall, 54, broke U.S. law by agreeing to help Mr. Deripaska, who was indicted himself last year on sanctions charges investigate a rival oligarch, and try to get off the sanctions list. The charges are a serious and rare accusation against a senior FBI official, and they demonstrate that the reach of Russia's oligarchs can extend into the heart of American law enforcement. Quote, This is an unprecedented case, which rightly or wrongly will fuel political criticism and concern about the FBI, said Jonathan C. Poling, a former prosecutor in the Justice Department's National Security Division. Yeah, that's definitely going to... My drive precious back. FBI, they, I've held them in such high esteem up until this point. <laughs> the charges demonstrate DOJ clearly intends to send a strong message, including to former officials that worked in national security fields. I mean, this guy's name is so ridiculous, it has to be fake, right? Uh, yeah, I guess we'll see. <laughs> anyway, I don't know who to trust, but it certainly isn't Amazon, who just nuked... The one last positive thing that it had going for it by doing away with its Amazon Smile charity program. As you're probably <laughs> aware by now, tech companies are mm, tightening the old belt these days despite their revenues continuing to grow. And it all just seems so pointless. Uh, one company announces that they're axing 6% of their workforce, so three more tech companies do it because, uh, well, why not? Everyone else is. They're doing 6%. We wouldn't want to do more than that and draw unwanted attention. Just make sure you fire all the senior people who have clawed their way to better salaries through blind commitment and dedication to the company. And They're worth the most. We just they got the high, they've been around so long. They got those annual fucking cost of living increases. Oh, get rid of them. So many, uh, specifically uh, like Google employees being, I worked for the company for 20 years. Yeah, there was, And yeah. my card was just deactivated and they sent the emails about it like via Gmail. Yeah. Yeah, I saw a couple of those. It's like, yeah, I started Google in like 2003. I'm like, Jesus Christ. This is like an evil boss trope from like 80s movies where like you didn't even have the balls to, to fire yeah. me to my face. I've been at this company for 20 years. And yeah, the Google thing, it was either an email or like, or more, uh, just more undignified. They made everyone show up and it's just like, if your badge works, you yeah, get so to go in. Yeah, so it was red or green yeah, if when you get, people are scanning. If your badge doesn't scan, uh, that means you got laid off. So get the fuck out of here. Get out. I don't care if you've worked here for 20 years. I don't care if you've missed your kids' softball practices. And yeah, sure. Is this, <laughs> you is... sucker. You thought this was a family? This is not a family. Get the fuck out of here. Is this the fault of us and our mismanagement? Sure. But we are not going to take the blame. Yeah, anyways, uh, yeah, Amazon took things a step further with their cost-cutting measures. 
as they are wont to do. The Amazon, uh, you know, oh, I see, I see a bunch of companies being shrewd and cruel. <laughs> well, want to be left out. Uh, <laughs> they have discontinued their customer-dictated charity program, which has been responsible for nearly a billion dollars in donations over the years. That's a billion dollars that could have been revenue. <laughs> That's what they're thinking. So, but it wouldn't have. It's not like it would have been like, well, it saved all the jobs. Because no. no, they they fired people and did this. Yeah, yeah. They're doing both. Why not both? Yeah. The other thing too is it's like someone broke down like the operating costs of I forget which company it was, but it was another one that like downsized significantly, and it was like the smallest amount of their money goes to employment. Yeah. It's like uh you know a, a billion dollars on marketing and like I don't know a hundred million or two hundred million on employee. And uh, interestingly, um, Tim Cook coming out of all this. Looking pretty okay. Taking he, a pay cut. Yeah, which is, this is a lot more common in Japan. I think we saw this with, like, one of Nintendo's chief executives recently. But it's, like, in other countries, if you are the, the person in charge of a company and your company, like, is doing bad and needs to tighten its belt, um, you, you, take, you take the hit. It's nuts that, like, <laughs> I don't know his salary, but, like, you know. A, a, he got downgraded from, like, $100 million a year to, like, $40 million a year. Oh, no. How many jobs can that save? Like, uh, yeah, apparently a lot, because yeah. they, they're they like the one company not doing layoffs. Anyways, well, yeah, we'll see. So far, no. Yeah. But anyways, if, if for some reason you didn't have it activated, uh, oh, well, too late. But Amazon allowed you to pick a charity, and then a small percentage of each purchase that you made would go to that charity with no extra cost to you. Uh, it might be a small percent of each purchase, but with the massive amount of customers combined, it, it made for a pretty sizable amount of money going to good causes. And those causes were ones that you chose. So it's not just like, hey, it's which is great yeah. if it goes to like a certain good cause or whatever, but this was a way that you could target certain charities that you supported. Uh, Amazon is ending the program on February 20th. And here's Ars Technica with more. Amazon emailed participants of the free program about the news on Wednesday. The email said that Amazon Smile, which launched in 2013, has not grown to create the impact that we had originally hoped. So we're just not going to do anything. No. <laughs> they're going to they're, they're have charity things that they do, but yeah, not like this program. We have discovered that charity does not work. <laughs> and so we will no longer be participating in it. We can't trust you people with this money and where it goes. I would have guessed they would have said, like, our mission is accomplished. We've solved all of the issues yes. that we set out to solve. Uh -huh. But now they're just like, we raised all this money and uh, didn't do jack shit. Yeah. Anyway, it continues. Amazon Smile shoppers can pick which charity will receive the 0.5% donation from the 1,500,000 c 3 charitable groups participating. These groups include American Red Cross, Meals on Wheels America, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, and local groups like Specific Boys and Girls Club chapters. Amazon claims Amazon Smile has donated $449,385,192 to global charities and $400 million to U.S. charities as of December 2022. But the tech giant is now telling shoppers that it tried to do too much and its ability to have an impact was often spread too thin. I'm sure all these charities feel like, there were, well, this is just not enough, Amazon. There, We'd rather you had just given us nothing. There, there were a couple of charities where Amazon was like, well, look, uh, the cumulative amount uh, for this charity was only like $500 like, yeah, a Yeah, that makes a fucking like, difference. Yeah, especially if it's like a local charity. Yeah. It's like, oh, now we don't have that at all. So we, we yeah. <laughs> Continue. So we did, not that they're doing nothing, they are going to do charity stuff, it's just like, we tried, uh, you know, giving people a choice yeah. to where they could send the money that, uh, that that we're going to give on their behalf, and uh, it turns out people are stupid. I used to give the homeless, you know, the loose change in my pocket, but then I really thought about it, I'm like, that's really not that much money. <laughs> it's probably not helping them at all, so I'm just going to stop giving money to the homeless just at all. They're not getting any of my change. I'm throwing it in the trash. <laughs> right into the gutter. <laughs> Uh, continues, unfortunately, Amazon didn't announce an immediate philanthropic effort to replace Amazon Smile. What? Amazon not being philanthropic? Uh, Instead, it said it will continue to pursue and invest in other areas where it can make meaningful change. It adds that once Amazon Smile closes, charities will still be able to seek support from Amazon customers by creating their own wish lists. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> the charities have to act like fucking like Twitch e girls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Need a new microphone for the, for the charity. <laughs> oh. This is so ridiculous. I mean, like, good. I hope that they pick some very specific charities that they're going to donate to or whatever. I mean, they're doing it for tax purposes anyway. But, like, in the meantime, like, 
Jeff Bezos' ex-wife, he takes the money from the divorce and just gives it <laughs> yeah, away. Like, well, I, don't need, I don't need all this fucking shit. I'm rich enough to live like a million lifetimes she's, I, and not I, worry about I don't anything. know the actual numbers, but I believe she's by this point given more to charity than all of Amazon did with their Amazon smile. Yeah. Yeah. See, like, I don't know anything about her other than this. I'm like, that's cool. Because, like, you know, it would be cool to be super rich, but at a certain point, it's like... What are you doing? <laughs> what the fuck am I going to do with, like, $200 billion? What does that even... What does that even mean? Burn it by buying Twitter. I know. Like, have fun with it. Like, at least you can say that about Elon. Is like, he's doing what he wants with his money. Yeah. He's not it just seems like his own personal hell, but apparently he's having a great yeah, time. Yeah, he, he chose this for himself. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, seems... Seems wrong, but whatever. That leads us to our final bizarre story of the day. And yes, it does involve Donald Trump. But uh, he was back in rare form over the weekend when, uh, still low energy, but, you know, rare form, when he made a totally performative appearance at Diamond from Diamond and Silk's funeral. Oh, she was my favorite where, <laughs> of the duo. Where he repeatedly complained uh, about the length of the celebration of life, uh, used his eulogy time to bash Joe Brandon, and also complain about the stolen election, of course, and then claim to have uh, apparently never met Silk of Diamond and Silk, <laughs> despite uh, a few years there of them interacting there are on and off the campaign There are dozens of trail. photos of him with both of them. So, yeah, that has got to hurt. And right after Silk does her, like... Mm, Crazy bit, eulogy. Bit, yeah, usually eulogy. It, it, yeah, where Dangerous she, eulogy. Where she just, like, spouts an anti-vax talking points. Like, Not just anti-vax, but, like... Uh, anti people who got the vaccine yeah it's some real wild shit but um i mean we've seen trump at a wedding uh interrupting a wedding at mar-a-lago um to briefly congratulate the bride and groom before just going into one of his rambling mm -hmm. fucking political speeches and now we have that at a funeral yeah so and i'm sure everyone there loved it they're like I, diamond i don't who the fuck is diamond Woo! uh there's that's what i came here for yeah trump they, it, it's it's got to hurt even worse that not only like Trump being like, well, who? But like at the funeral for your like co-host and, and presumed best friend. Yeah. Well, Diamond was always the one that talked mm -hmm. and Silk, the one like who's still alive, situation? was just sort of like behind her like, mm-hmm. That's right. Tell him. Yeah. Like she's just like the flavor flave of Diamond and Silk. The ten or the teller of Penn and Teller. I mean... She at least spoke. Tell her no talking. Mm, yeah, that's true. Except on Penn and Teller's Fool Us, a great little show mm -hmm. that I love. Uh, but yeah, this is why even John McCain and his family said, no, <laughs> please no, to Donald Trump at his funeral. Uh, but yeah, here we are with some uh, just incredible uh, clips. And uh, the, these were posted on Twitter. Ron Philip uh, Kowski uh, posted the context to them. After Silk goes on and on about how much she loves Trump and all the great times they had together, Trump gets up and says this. You know, the world has lost one of its brightest stars, real star, but I see that uh, we have another star who is equal to, but she stepped up and she is different. I'm, I'm serious. I thought I knew them both. I didn't. I knew, I knew Diamond, but I didn't know Silk at all. I just learned about Silk. Trump concludes his moving eulogy to Diamond by saying the 2020 election was stolen from him and Republicans have got to get a lot tougher so they can swamp the Democrats in 2024 so they can fix the country. How do we stop the cheating? How do we stop it where you get more votes, but you still don't win? And the answer is the Republicans have to get tougher. The top people have to get tougher. And and you have to really swamp them. Uh, I can tell you one thing for sure, because he said it himself five times. Trump was definitely not expecting to sit through three plus hours of hymns and stories at Diamond's memorial service today. They said about 15 to 20 minutes in and out. This is a little longer than 15 minutes, right? I don't believe, you know, they told me, I said, give me a little time, because I have a lot of people waiting for me back in a place called Palm Beach, Florida. They said, give me a little time. What do you think it'll take? Oh, about 15, 20 minutes, sir, in and out. I said, well, it can take longer. This is a little longer than 15 minutes, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's... Um... He probably feels like he wasted a whole lot of valuable time. He could have been golfing. Yeah, I mean, this is like like little kid in church. I like, guarantee man, you sucks. he fucking blew up on his handlers after he 15 left 15 minutes, you said. I was in there for three hours. I had a tea time. <laughs> All this sad moping. Anyways, uh, yeah. I want McDonald's. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> 
Don't try telling me you got McDonald's at home. And don't take me to the one near Mar-a-Lago. They know I go there. <laughs> They'll spit in it. Uh, but it wasn't just low energy Trump inadvertently mocking the deceased. Silk herself took advantage of the spotlight, like we said earlier, to claim that Diamond died of vaccine exposure. Yeah, interesting. So it's like, oh, wait, so Diamond took the vaccine? No, even no, no, no. Even though she railed against the vaccine this whole time? Uh, no. no but she, the vaccine still got her. She brushed up against someone who had got the vaccine. Someone who is shedding the vax. Yeah, th which is, <laughs> look, this is extremely da dangerous rhetoric. Uh, I'm sure people don't believe it, but uh, yeah, considering the the... People who watched Diamond and Silk on Frank Social religiously, they might believe this, which is dangerous. No, a lot of people, I mean, I guess probably, relatively speaking, not a lot of people, but yeah. enough people believe in this, um, in the anti-vax crowd, that it is, um, like, they, they aren't just anti-vax, they are anti-vaxed people. Like, yes. people that are, they would rather risk the coronavirus than risk uh, breathing the same air as someone who got the vaccine because they believe the vaccinated people are shedding, shedding some sort of uh, thing yeah, they can uh, do. Musk started getting some of the flack over this weekend because he took his like booster or whatever. And yeah. people were like, yeah, like, I felt really sick for I like had to a do, day. I had to do the Gigafactory tour or something. Like that, so I had to do it. They're like, no, sir, you didn't have to do yeah. anything, sir. So also, he's just like, yeah, it was terrible. I felt so bad. And he just described like the same thing that most people got for like one of their shots, which was like, Roughly 18 to 24 hours of feeling like kind of shitty. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we like to, to instead take Trump's word on this one in in particular, uh, which is she died because her heart was too big. She had the biggest heart. That will kill you. Yeah. If your heart is too big. Uh, quick, quick uh, rant about uh, the football videos I've been seeing this weekend. I think, you know, for a while there was a trend and it was somewhat believable where people would get upset about their teams and then smash their TV accidentally. Uh, but it is now a trend that is on the level of like when Jimmy Kimmel asks people to like steal or hide yeah. their kids candy because it is so ridiculous. You can, It's so obvious too. People are pulling out like the smallest TVs they own that they like replaced or whatever. And then like getting violent with it and smashing it or like running it over with their cars. It's all fucking Wait, bullshit. What? Yeah. <laughs> Why would you... How would you run your? What? That's what I, I can see. Like, oh, like I'm, I'm so darn upset about the game happening right in front of me that my TV gets hurt. No, running they, over. Like, I'm so damn upset about that play. I'm gonna unplug this TV, take it outside, drive yeah. over it. That's while wearing your, you know, Dallas Cowboys jersey or whatever. But it's all, I'm getting so aggravated because it's just so obvious at this point. Like yeah. with the truck stuff, where it's just like, first of all, like. It sucks that these are going viral and that people believe them. But also, it's like, if that's a working TV, just at the very least, take it down to your local Goodwill or something. Yeah, it's, these people all bought new TVs. It's a lot Black of like Friday. plastic and other materials that aren't going to go away forever, and yeah. they could be used by someone who could then not buy another TV at the I, store. I tell you, TVs have gotten too cheap. You you kids don't know how good you have it. Back in like the nineties, a like thirty two inch TV that weighed like. 11,000 bucks. Like, way, way too much. was just a pain in the ass to install because the TVs weren't flat yet. Well, it was, yeah, a piece it was of like over $1,000. It was a piece of furniture. And like now you can get a fucking 60 inch TV for like $150 if you're okay with it coming from China and probably having dead pixels. That's like, it's in like a year. how uh, <laughs> uh, bands would, uh, you know, switch out to like cheap guitars to smash them yeah. at the end. It's like uh, fans of football are going out and buying like the cheapest TVs yeah. just so they can smash them when their team loses. It's ridiculous. You know what your teams would really hate? You know what's going to change uh, the team makeup next year and really motivate them? Uh, donating them to a local yeah. uh, charity organization. And I think that Those would... charity organizations, they need all the help they can get. After now Amazon. <laughs> now that all their Amazon money. has cut them off. Yeah, and they refuse to send any TVs. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, uh, that's it for today's very dumb episode. Uh, nice to take a break. There's a lot of really horrific, sad stuff happening. And you're already aware of it. It's it's not good. But uh, we'll be back with more news coming up soon. Uh, please, if you haven't already, watch our most recent episode, uh, The Talented Mr. George Santos, to find out everything that's been going on in the wild world of that Mr. George Santos. Also, a recent episode of Tech News Day. We'll see you soon for some tech news. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.